Germany's Ministry for Cooperation, BMZ, has a relatively new special initiative called One World No Hunger. It aims at operationalizing four global assignments covering six conceptual areas of action, which range from technical issues such as innovation in agriculture, to resilience to external shocks, to also politically very sensitive areas such as access to land. Stefan, you are heading this ambitious BMZ initiative. Where do you see its greatest value added and why? The greatest value added uh, is uh, the pure uh, political message. Um, a world without hunger is realistic. It is doable if we all focus on it and we all try to achieve that. There are too many, um, uh, too many hungry, too many malnourished people um, on, on Earth. More than 200, uh, 200, 800 million people suffering hunger, 2 billion people suffering malnutrition. That is a scandal. We tend to forget this uh, as uh, soon as we do not see it every night on television while there is a, a hunger crisis. But we tend to forget it, to ignore it. Um, but these people are suffering and it is realistic to overcome that scandal. Now, in terms of its value added, is there a different approach that the initiative is going? We have a very holistic approach. We see the different uh, root causes of hunger and we see the need to address the various root causes. It is a problem of... Um, of lack of uh, availability of food in some cases. It is uh, a problem of um, limited access to food for many people. It is a question of uh, limited util utilization of food and a question of uh, stability of uh, food supply over time. And that has uh, many different causes. We have to strengthen uh, the agricultural sector to increase production and productivity. But at the same time, we need target, well-targeted um, uh, measures uh, to address, in particular, uh, the nutrition of uh, uh, women, uh, pregnant women and small children. And uh, we have to address uh, social security issues. And so we need the whole range of that. And this is the key aspect of that uh, initiative to address that all. There's always a lot of talk about addressing structural issues in rural areas. Is that not in a way also a political issue? If you think of how you can actually overcome dysfunctional social institutions that maybe rule in the rural areas and maybe make that access difficult? It is a highly political issue and the, the main challenge is uh, the, the lack of political attentions uh, to rural areas. As soon as we have more political attention to rural areas in general, uh, all other things will, uh, will follow. And with this initiative and other initiatives like that, we try to overcome that lack of political attention everywhere in the in Rural areas are very important for the people. Most of uh, hungry and mal malnourished people live in rural areas and this is our key concern. We have to directly address that. In terms of your initiative, there are quite a number of countries that are approached. And there is some criticism with regard to the stretch of the initiative, saying that some focus on a few countries would have been maybe better. What do you say to that? It is always a challenge to find the right uh, balance between a strong focus on the one hand and inclusiveness uh, on, on the other. Um, we identified uh, 13 countries uh, to where we focus our attention and uh, I am convinced that this is the right balance between focus and inclusiveness. There is no one-size-fits-all uh, solution. In many different countries need different answers to very specific problems. In, one, in some countries it is maybe more a question of uh, 
uh, of a lack of productivity in the agricultural sector. In the other uh, country, it's more a question of lack of rural services in general, lack of innovation, um, uh, more to be done on the social security side. But in the end, if you have a certain set of countries, you can, uh, you can all together address the right issues with the right measures. Is innovation one of the foci of the initiative? Innovation is one of the is is one of the key topics. Um, if we if we look around what is happening um, in in the world and how agri the agricultural and food sector is making a pro progress, um, 30, 40, 50 years ago, um, progress in agriculture was mainly a question of more inputs. Uh, more fertilizer, more water, more mechanization, uh, more hectares of land uh, needed uh, to increase production. That has completely changed in many countries today. Innovation is the most uh, important factor of progress. Um, in Africa, for example, many countries are lagging behind and we have to support these countries to become uh, more innovative and to get a more innovative agricultural sector. That is one of our key, key concerns. There's a lot of talk about innovation transfer, but maybe it's more about that innovation has to come from within a particular society, within the agricultural productive area to actually support that particular agriculture there. Uh, and then you would not have to transfer innovation that sometimes doesn't work. How do you see innovation being brought forward in general? Once again, a balanced approach, I think, is, is needed. Um, and you always have to look very closely what is really happening in a country, what is happening on the ground. Um, on the one hand, um, agricultural research is needed. We need new answers to new challenges. Um, climate change is only one of these new challenges. Um, but on the other hand, um, a lot of knowledge is available um, on the ground. Many farmers have a lot of experience. They know what to do they know how to react to, to new situations. So, innovation is, a, to, to get more innovation is a question to bring all that together and link it through knowledge, through knowledge management, education, um, uh, extension services, and all these approaches that are suitable to, to increase the level of knowledge on the ground. Let's look at the coordination of the different efforts. We know that donor coordination is not going that well. Would it be helpful to split up the efforts of the various donors geographically rather, especially in rural development? What do you think? Would that be maybe a step backward rather? I would not favor um, a, a geographical distribution of labor. Um, uh, see, rural development is a very complex uh, issue. It requires uh, me measures in the agricultural sector, in infrastructure, in social services. We need, um, or countries need um, education uh, in the countryside. Um, health services uh, in rural areas, social protection, resource management, uh, water resource management, land issues, all that. Um, countries should have a vision of how their rural areas should look like and how these rural areas should develop. And donors should support partner countries to get to come to that uh, uh, to, to that vision. Once that vision and that plan is clear, there is room for many donors to identify 
certain actions that fit into that. So here is the same thing we, 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 we recognize in many different areas when it comes to, 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 to donor action. There is uh, ownership needed on site of the partner country. But once ownership is there, there is a lot to do with alignment. And many donors then can align with, um, with that strategy and that overall vision and plan of the, of the countries. Um, for example, uh, then one donor um, is uh, most suitable to, um, to take action on infrastructure while another one has more experience, more to bring in on, on the social side and the agricultural sector. Sounds a lot like the ideal scenario for CADEP to me. Is there some linkage with CADEP? Absolutely. CADEP for, for us, I think, is the overarching guiding political uh, uh, process here. And uh, things that hold true for CADAP in general for the African continent then holds true for uh, each and every uh, uh, country, uh, country then. It is our key, um, uh, our key political process and we stay in contact with the African Union, with the CADAP partners uh, to make sure that not just we as German Development Cooperation, but all the other we would like to get more engaged in this initiative, all align with that CADAP thinking. 2015 is a very important year for development policy. There will be a number of big events and BMZ is also very strong in the platform and in the board. Where do you see the platform in that post-2015 process that's coming to finalization now during this year? And where do you see your engagement? Rural development will stay high on the political agenda. I am very, very sure that is, uh, that is necessary. I think um, there are two goals um, we strive for. First, two overarching goals. One, um, People today need a, a healthy life, a decent life, a safe life. But at the same time, future generations um, need, would like to have um, healthy lives, um, decent lives. So that is sustainable development. We have to care for the people today, but at the same time, we have to care that future generations can live the same way. It will be decisive how rural areas will develop here. Even if in the long run, in the very long run, um, not so many people will live in rural areas, but that really would take a very, very long time. We are it's said uh, we are living in an urbanizing world. But what that mean? What does that mean? Today, there are 3.5 billion people living in rural areas. 50 years from now, there will still live 3.5 billion people then. And only as uh, towards the turn of the next century, there is a chance that number of people living in the countryside uh, will, will decrease. But for a very long time, many, many people live there. We have to care for, this, uh, for these people. People in rural areas uh, need to have the chances to leave, uh, live a proper life. But at the same time, and that is even more important, we have to make sure that resources, uh, water, land, biodiversity, the whole food that is produced in countryside uh, will have their production means, a uh, production basis uh, to feed the world and provide food, provide water, provide uh, all that uh, uh, rural areas are, are able uh, to provide. Now, that would be a very nice finishing point, but I have one more question. 
How important is it, what do you think, where people are located, especially when you consider their nutrition and hidden hunger aspects? A main point for us is um, to, to strengthen uh, a smallholder ag agriculture. I, this is key. Um, and there, is, there are huge potential, huge opportunities to strengthen. Cities all over the world, in particular in developing countries, are rising. Uh, are, are, are growing. Um, and people living in these cities, they will have to decide where they want and will get their food from. Will they source it from the global market or would they go uh, to local markets? Um, and here, I think there is a great chance for rural areas um, if they succeed in linking to the growing urban markets. So uh, the building of value chains that will link rural areas with urban areas is, a, is an opportunity, but at the same time a great challenge. Thank you very much.